Hello guys! So, Luke is wearing a suit. That must mean one thing and one thing only. It is Oscar season. Oh yes! Anybody that knows me knows that I absolutely love this whole Oscar nonsense and award season. Last year I did do an Oscar predictions vid. There is a link for that video just up here right now if you want to check that out. But yeah, it was quite a condensed video because I had to sort of jam-pack most of the interesting categories into one quick video. In that video, I did really well. I got all but one right in that video. Thank you very much, Moonlight. Yes, you threw a delightful spatter in the works when you ended up winning Best Picture. That was one of those instances where it shows you how completely unpredictable the Oscars can go sometimes. And for me, I just love that. I love predicting the Oscars. I love it when I get them right. I love it when they surprise me as well. But yeah, I always try and see if I can improve each year, but yeah, usually I always get around 17, 18 out of 26, right? This year I thought instead of doing one video, I'm going to give you a bunch of smaller videos focused on each category. So this video is going to be about Best Actor, I'm going to be doing other videos for like Best Actress, Best Supporting Actor, Best Supporting Actress, Best Original Screenplay, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Director, and Best Picture, of course. So how these videos are going to work is that I'm going to list all the nominees, and then I'm going to give you my initial thoughts on what I think of those nominees, and who got snubbed. Then I'm going to run through the nominees' previous experience with the Academy, like how many times they've been nominated before, how many times they've won. Then I'm going to state who I want to win, and now I'm putting emphasis on that word want, because there is a big difference between who I want to win, and who I think will win. Sometimes they overlap, but not always, and after I've said who I want to win, I will go into who I think will win and give you some analysis on why I think they're going to win, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on the category as a whole. These prediction videos will be a representation of who I think will win now, but there's a chance my opinion might change closer to the night, but yeah, I will release a full list of updated predictions on Twitter, and just so you know, I will be doing a live tweet coverage of Oscar Night on March 4th. So if you want to know my full list of updated predictions, my thoughts on the red carpet, and also my reactions to who's won, then be sure to follow me on Twitter. That's my Twitter address right there on the screen right now. And yeah, you can follow my thoughts and reactions as they happen. I always get very drunk on that night, so my thoughts can be a little bit wacky, but yeah, you might enjoy it. Okay, so let's get started now, and I'm kicking this year's list of prediction videos off with Best Actor. And in this category, we have Timothy Chalamet for Call Me By Your Name, Daniel Day-Lewis for Phantom Thread, Daniel Kaluuya for for Get Out, Gary Oldman for The Darkest Hour, and Denzel Washington for Roman J. Israel, ESC, or ESQ, whichever it is. Right, so let's start off with my initial thoughts on this category and who is missing out on this category. Well, for stars, the first most obvious person that's missing from this category is James Franco for his performance as Tommy Wiseau in The Disaster Artist. His performance as Tommy Wiseau has already won him a Golden Globe, and he's nominated for the SAG Award as well. But surprisingly, he was absent from this year's nominees, and why is that? Well, most likely it's down to the fact that James Franco faced some sexual allegation charges which have recently cropped up. Much like Harvey Weinstein, Kevin Spacey, he is the next in another line of strong, powerful men who have been accused of certain sexual misconduct in Hollywood. And I think that's probably the main factor as to why he's missing here. And why Denzel Washington appeared on this list, surprisingly, when rightfully James Franco probably should have been here. When they announced the Best Actor category, I was gobsmacked because I had literally no idea Denzel Washington was even in contention for a Best Actor nomination this year. I had no idea he even made a movie. It was a priceless moment of like, seriously? But there are also other men that gave great leading performances this year that also didn't get nominated, and those include Jamie Bell for Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool, Tom Hanks for his role in The Post, but you could argue his role in this film was more of a supporting role, but regardless, he didn't get nominated either way, and this is like the sixth time like he hasn't been nominated when he's given cracking performances. It's baffling to think that Tom Hanks hasn't even been nominated since 2001 for his performance in Castaway. And also one other person that I thought could have earned a nomination and would have rightfully earned one was Robert Pattinson for Good Time. Yes, this was one of the most surprising, most nuanced performances of the year, and I think because it came out so early, it just kind of got lost in the muffle of award season, and yeah, it didn't have enough momentum behind it. But still, it would have been a very deserving nomination if Robert Pattinson was nominated this year. Right, so out of these five performances, I have seen three so far. They include Daniel Kaluuya for Get Out, Timothy Chalamet for Call Me By Your Name, and Gary Oldman for Darkest Hour. Let's have a look at their Academy Awards history. Amongst the five of them, Daniel Day-Lewis has been nominated six times and has won three. The last one that he won for 
was for Lincoln. Denzel Washington has been nominated eight times for acting and has won twice, the last one being in 2002 for Training Day. Gary Oldman has been nominated twice. This is his second time being nominated for Darkest Hour. His previous was for Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy back in 2012, and he is yet to win one. And Timothy Chalamet and Daniel Kaluuya are both first time nominees, but funnily enough, they are both nominated for the EE Rising Star BAFTA Award this year. And between the two of them, I feel like Daniel Kaluuya has the edge to win the Rising Star Award for the BAFTA because he's British. And generally, because it's voted for by the public, the British public will probably favor someone who's British. So yeah, I think he's probably in the lead to win that award, but it's a different story when it comes to the Oscars. Right, now who do I want to win? Well, to be honest, I would be completely exhilarated if either Timothy Chalamet or Daniel Kaluuya took home the award for best actor but it doesn't mean I think they are going to win. Both their performances in their respective movies were stellar. For different reasons, but they both excelled in their films. Daniel Kaluuya was a surprise nomination for me. I was hoping he would get nominated. I was exhilarated when he did, but the fact that he's nominated for a performance in what's considered a horror thriller is very rare, and it's a win by itself. So I'm just happy he's nominated this year. Do I think he's gonna win? Probably not, but hey, I'm just happy he did get the nom. And Timothy Chalamet's performance was in a more traditionally down-to-earth, Academy Awards-friendly type of film. It was so nuanced and it connected with me personally, not because of the peach scene, <laughs> but yeah. If I had to give the edge over one of the two of them for me to see them win, I would give it to Chalamet. But still, I don't think either of them will win. But still so happy they both got a nomination. So who do I think will win? Sometimes there's a big difference between who I think should win and who I think will win. And this year, they're kind of the same. Personally, I would love to see Timothy Chalamet or Daniel Kaluuya win. But the reason for me wanting those to win is because both Call Me By Your Name and Get Out featured very highly on my top 10 favorite films of 2017. You can see that there, there's a link for it there right now. So it's natural for me to want the films that I loved the most last year to get some recognition. However, I honestly do think that the winner this year is going to be Gary Oldman for Darkest Hour. Even though Darkest Hour didn't even feature on my top 10, didn't even get an honorable mention, it's one of those performances that just carries the film and it's just a great showcase for an actor to demonstrate just how talented they are. It keeps the film really interesting, kind of like Eddie Redmayne in The Theory of Everything. Great performance, not the best film. Now the reasons that I think Gary Oldman is going to win is because it's a performance that ticks a lot of the Academy boxes. First of all, Gary Oldman is portraying Winston Churchill, okay? That's one of the most notable historian figures you can think of, and the Academy loves it when people play important historical figures. And of course, Churchill is freaking Churchill, okay? Meryl Streep won Best Actress for playing Maggie Thatcher in The Iron Lady, so yeah, who else do you go after Maggie? Maggie Thatcher, Winston Churchill. But also Gary Oldman is British, and this is gonna sound a little bit elitist, but yeah, if you are British, it does kind of help your chances because being British sort of carries the idea that you are classically trained, and Gary Oldman is of course classically trained. He is a virtuoso, that man. But also he's been underlooked by the Academy for so many years for other performances that he's done. He's one of the best working actors we've got in Britain right now, and he transformed into the role of Winston Churchill. Yes, he may be wearing a lot of prosthetics and makeup, but that doesn't matter. It's all performance-based. You forget that Gary Oldman is in there. It feels like you are genuinely watching archive footage of Winston Churchill. That's how believable he is in this role. And I did love him in this role, and I think he's completely worthy of the nomination, but do I think it's his best performance? I wouldn't say that. I do think it's a little bit overstated, this performance, but still, it is what carries the film. It's one of these performances that makes the movie. In fact, if it weren't for Gary Oldman, this film wouldn't have had a chance of getting nominated for Best Picture this year. So this is how I look at this category this year. The Academy will choose to award Gary Oldman for a very fruitful career, with this performance certainly being worthy, but not his piece de resistance. So my final thoughts on this category. Well, this is Daniel DeLewis's final performance, supposedly, before he retires from acting. And while some people might think, oh, well, the Academy will want to award him for, you know, a very prosperous career, because he's always very selective with his roles, and yeah, he just sort of immerses himself into each one. I don't think it's gonna be his year because for one, he already won for Lincoln just a few years back. And also Gary Oldman has paid his dues. He's renowned. He's definitely due for some sort of recognition. So I think that'll be in the Academy's minds when they make their votes. And as for Denzel Washington, well, he wasn't even on my radar, which says something. And if he wasn't on my radar, then it's very unlikely that he's got any buzz behind him. So it kind of feels like the Academy would just sort of 
trying to pick someone, you know, to fill James Franco's slot at the last minute. So yeah, I don't honestly think Denzel Washington even has a chance, but yeah, I would need to still go see his performance to see what it's like before I completely write it off. So I'm saying my prediction for the 2018 Best Actor Oscar will go to... Gary Oldman for Darkest Hour. So who do you guys think will win Best Actor this year? It's still early days, so there's a chance that, you know, things could change as award season progresses. But yeah, who do you guys think will win Best Actor? And was there someone that you were really upset with that didn't get a nomination? Or do you think someone doesn't deserve to be in this list of nominees? Whatever you think, you can let me know in the comments section below. I'm going to be making lots more of these prediction vids over the next coming weeks, covering a whole range of categories, including Best Actress, Best Supporting Actor and Actress, Best Original and Adapted Screenplay, Best Director and Best Picture. So if you want to be updated as to when I release those videos, be sure to click that subscribe button, okay? And hit the bell if you want to get those alerts. Thanks so much for watching, guys. For more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Hirfield, and I'll see you next time.